Go!
champion, I'm introducing as a 2009 District 30 champion uh, in the International Speech Contest. And he's an IT technician with over 20 years experience in serving corporate companies. He loves Egyptian, ancient Egyptian history so much that he taught it for seven years. He also loves books and is fascinated by historical literature. He can stay in a bookstore or in a library all day long. He would love to write a book about Egyptian hypoglyphs, ancient picture writing. Let me present to you the 2009 district champion, Mr. Greg Thompson.
2009 champion of the International Speech Contest for District 30, Mr. Greg Thompson. Something to support what I just said, 
and my conclusion, something to tie it all in and close it all up. I got a couple of notes here that I want to make sure I didn't forget. <laughs> One of the biggest things that I ran into is I always hungered for evaluations. Evaluations, evaluations, evaluations. Guess what I ran into? I got up to here with the evaluations. <laughs> After I won the district contest, when I went off, it was regionals at the time. It's, it's, the regionals all done in one spot now, but it was regionals at the time. When I went to regionals, I was hungry for evaluations. I got so many evaluations. Guess what? When I got up to compete, I had a great, powerful speech. As a matter of fact, I had a similar speech to Mr. Nixon, who also made it to my regionals about being homeless. I got in front of that crowd. I had so many evaluations in my head. Every time I made a move, I thought about what somebody said about my speech. Too many evaluations. So now, at this juncture, I only get so many evaluations, then I cut it off. I cut it off. One of the things that you have to do is believe in your speech. I fight for my speeches. When I get in front of an evaluation and you evaluate my speech, I'm only looking for particular stuff. I already know about my speech. I know about myself. So I'm looking for just one or two little things that will help me. So believing in your speech is extremely important. Helps your confidence. Even when people don't think you can do it. Because when I won in 2009, nobody believed I can do it but me and my mentor. No one. Please believe in your speeches. Please. Stage time, stage time, stage time. There's a champion called Darren McCoy. I know you guys know him. That's his mantra, and I agree with it. If you ever get the opportunity to speak or ask to speak, speak. It's only going to help you. Speak. If they ask you to do a role in your Toastmasters meeting, I don't care if it's Toastmasters of the day, please take that opportunity to speak. Believe me, it will help you. And finally, don't quit. When I competed in 2007, I lost. At the club level, I came back the next year with that same speech, won it all through district. So please have the resolve, believe in your speech, believe in yourself, stand up for your speech. And my name is Greg Thompson, 2009. Yeah. 
Young man, if you want to change your quality of life, enter an organization called Toastmasters and enter the contest. Now, I didn't even know what Toastmasters was. I honestly thought it was a group of people who met for breakfast and made toast. <laughs> But I said, if Les Brown told me to do this, I'm going to make it happen. I went to the store, I started buying bread. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I went so I Googled it up, and I, I found a club. And as soon as I joined my first club, I entered the contest. And luckily, I was after two years of competing, I was able to win a district contest. Now, I, I have a question. Raise your hand if you would like to be successful at a speech contest. I want to give you a piece of advice that my coach, 2006, and her uh, world champion of public speaking in 2006, something that he told me. He said, if you want to be successful at winning a contest, forget about it. <laughs> Stop trying to win these contests. You have to change the way you look at this opportunity. You see, so many people look at this as if it's just a speech contest. And when you look at it just as something like that, a lot of times you don't have enough fire to weather the storm that will come to be a champion. One of the biggest storms that you're going to have is going to be you. You see, you're not competing against anyone that's speaking on the stage at that contest. That's what my coach told me. I, I, I realized that was really important when I, I was at a district courthouse at the district, it was the division level, KC Reed. There are six speakers. I'm the last speaker. Young lady, beautiful by the name of Kisa Reed, she's the fourth speaker. She goes up, she delivers this powerful message. She talks about how the big goals in life really aren't that important. But see, that was interesting because I was a sixth speaker and my speech was all about the big goals in life. <laughs>
The difference between the people, in my opinion, who, who are very successful, whether you get a trophy or not, is going to be how serious you take this opportunity. Are you going to be committed enough to go to the different clubs? Are you going to be committed to get these evaluations? To do that extra work that most people just don't want to do? It's all about your why. I want to share with you all how I came up with my, actually how I came up with my speech contest. Does anyone want to know how I came up with my speech content for the contest? Yes. yes. Okay, the first year I competed, I just did the traditional cookie cutter three point speech. It was, it was okay, I made it to the district, but I found out quickly that that's not good enough when you're, when you're up with some powerful speakers. So the second year, I thought I did something really simple. First, I tried to write for a year and I couldn't come up with anything. And then one day I just happened to be walking up the street on my way to work, running late, bumping to a blind man, and basically I used that information, I used that, that story, and that's what I spoke about. But the story was so powerful to me that before the contest even came, I had already told about five or ten people the story. So there are stories and content around you every day. You don't have to force a story out. There's all around you. Just find something that you are passionate, that you love to talk about, that you can't stop talking about. Talk about that and just get as many evaluations as you can. And I'm going to close with this last quote that, that my coach shared with me. And I asked him, I said, well, when I'm coming up with my content, what, what's the best speech I should give to women? And he told me, he said, well, think about it as if you got seven minutes to live, and the creator of the universe is going to give you that seven minutes to share your message and your experience with the world. Wow. And if you can deliver that message, you have won a championship, and you've won, and you are a champion, and you have everything that you need from that point. So, my name is Dwayne Jackson, and I just want to thank you for that time. Remember the old 
Gatorade commercial, is it in you? The Olympics are coming. We don't care. Michael Phelps doesn't care about the friendship and all this other kind of stuff. He's there to win. And you get seven minutes and 30 seconds to bring it. The Marine Corps doesn't talk about, are you okay if I shot you? No. You can't do it. That's it. That's first of all. You have to really want this. This is not about friendship. It's not about all this other kind of stuff because you will lose. There are people who truly want to win. So if you bring a speech that's kind of okay and all this, go home. Or you're going to go home with a smaller trophy, I guarantee you. <laughs> the second thing, and this is really important, this is the reason why I really feel I have an unfair advantage to compete again. Everybody has a story. Everybody has a sound. And once you know someone's sound, you can beat them. Everyone has, and when I say a sound, I'm not talking about what you hear. I'm talking about the signature, that the way they speak, there's a sound to it, and once you figure out that sound, you got it, or you adjust your speech for that sound. So I'll give you an example. The International Speech Contest. I knew every, all the contestants but two people. Jill Morgenthau, who's an excellent speaker, professional speaker, and everything else. But one thing I knew about Jill was, one, she's a woman, two, she was a, she's a colonel in the United States Army. So I'm already thinking, if you're a colonel, if you're a woman and a colonel in the United States Army, there's a certain power that you've got to bring. And she's been doing it for 30 years. So what I did was, I just laid and waited. And when we're doing the contestant meet and greet and what number, all I needed to do was hear the way she came. And I let her, in fact, I asked her a question because I needed to hear her sound. Once I heard her sound, it was just the way I thought, well, Barry, I was like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because we were competing in the evaluate, I'm um, sorry, table topics. We was competing in table topics. <coughs> so therefore, I'm sorry, international, international. That means that she had seven minutes and 30 seconds to, no, she wasn't, she was table topic. But when you have that kind of power as a military person, as someone that's a current reaches the rank of colonel, they usually take a long time to bring their stuff out. Charles Brooks, I love Charles Brooks. Bro Charles Brooks is a mentor of mine. But Charles Brooks is Shakespearean. When Charles speaks, everything is to be or not to be. <laughs> so if I'm competing against Charles in a 15-minute speech contest, he got me. But in 2 minutes and 30 seconds, uh-uh. Because he's going to take him too long to wind up. <laughs> your competitors before you get on the stage. <laughs> know the sound. That's why I would go to the different division content, because I just need to figure out the sound. And once I got the sound, most people are going to continue with that same sound all the way through. Even if their content is good, that's how they're going to come. And once you figure that out, you got it. Tim, I love Tim. Tim's my man. Tim, give me a favor. Tim has 200 videos on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew Tim is hungry. I know he wants to win, but he gave me a gift. Because I said, oh, hell, all I have to do is look at his videos. <laughs> I sat there and looked at Tim's video for two hours and two and a half hours and 15 minutes. I knew what Tim was going to say before he came on the stage. <laughs> All he had to do, and Tim was a tech, you got technicians, there are people who are technicians. I knew what Tim was going to do. His right hand, his left hand, the way he was going to move, I had him. And then he looked at me at the table, we were doing mental warfare, he was looking at the table, I wasn't looking at him. Because he was going to war. I know some of you are like, that's so harsh, but that's why you don't have a trophy, because you can't.
because of what a story does. A story is the most powerful force on earth. That's how we communicate. Stories are genetic. So when you tell a story, if people can remember your story, because what do, some of you have heard my seminar before, what are the three things that a good story does? A good story is memorable. A good story calls you to is what? Calls you to action. And most importantly, a good story makes you need to want to tell a friend. And when, so when you're creating your speech, and it sounds and it's not memorable, it's just a nice speech, you're not going to win. You're not going to win. That's it. And if you do that, you can win the evaluation, the table topics, and the international, at least make it to the district, guaranteed. And I know for a fact because I did, the first experiment was with Melody Bird. She was on speech number three when I met her, and she was in third place with Dwayne in the international speech contest. So not only am I a champion, I own the company too. <laughs> Stand up. Okay. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Right. Thank you. Some of your reference getting more evaluations, going to other clubs, and I'm a part of a brand new club, six months, in the charter, and I have to understand um, how many clubs should I do to do in, and should I be giving the same speech, getting multiple evaluations on the same projects, and you support that. Stand. Okay, yeah, I Stand. Um, so for those who didn't hear, she asked about how many evaluations should she give uh, and what's the pro evaluations in the process. Same speech, how many clubs, like how much, how much, how hard am I working at this? I, I, I recommend in terms of content just to have one main focus. Now you can give different, you can change, have variations of that speech, but a lot of times speakers, what, what stops you from connecting from an audience is if you're in your head too much, if you're thinking too hard. And so you don't have to think as hard if you know your content, if you know your life story. So talk about one main focus, and I would try to keep the same speech to do that. In terms of evaluations, first, it does not have to be at a Toastmasters club. I would speak to my friend. I was at the doctor's office talking to the lady next to me. Like, do you want to hear my speech? So <laughs> you know, she started talking, and I'll be like, who yes. But, but if you're, I would give to tell that story, like Barry everyone you can. Don't just limit it to speeches. So every time you get in contact with someone, you don't have to say this is my speech. Just start going into the story and just see what their reactions are. Thank you. When you look at a piece of music, when you look at Mozart, you don't see Mozart and others. You don't see Picasso and others at the name of the, at the bottom. Okay, your speech is your symphony. That's your sound. And it's nice to have a circle of friends that you trust, but don't let everybody in your soup. I had people come up, my speech was about being homeless. I had someone come up to me at the division contest and said, you know what your speech is missing? I said, what? You need more humor. Ah. <laughs> I lived in garbage cans for a year. I need more humor? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so don't let everybody in your planet, okay? Mozart just said, what do you think? Do you think I should do something? No, that was his sound. I just want to say right quick that I know when I went out and competed in 2009, I got as many evaluations as I can. And one of the things that I found is that there's a thing. If you start doing evaluations, you're going to find out about yourself. You're going to find out, okay, you know, he did this great. Your movement was great. Your voice was great. And the things that they tell you that are positive, they don't even look and compile that and say, oh wow, I got all this going cool for myself. And the things that they say that they didn't like or that you need to improve on, then you want to take those and say, okay, the next evaluation I get, I want to see if that same thing continues to come up. That's how you tell a good evaluation from an evaluation that's not so good. It's the things that you keep hearing. Good vocal variety, you know, great movement, 
Lots of humor. You keep hearing that, you're going to say, oh, wow, this is me. And you're going to find out who you are as a speaker as you get those evaluations. So evaluations can be good and bad, but make sure you got a question. Yes, sir. Great, great. All right. Great. Yes, sir. Question for you. I heard your speech and you ended with the poem, The Will to Win. Now, what would you do differently had a speaker spoke before you and used that same powerful poem and ended his speech and you had to come behind him? What would you do differently? Oh, wow. I never had that happen before. But, <laughs> hypothetically, if a person be front, now, what, what did happen is that a person gave a similar speech that I gave. When I gave the speech on failure in 2009, there was a guy I competed against that came right before me, gave a speech on failure. So a lot of times, you don't get really good evaluations when you do that. But I've never competed at the district level when a person used the exact same quote. I haven't had it, and I, what, what would you do? But what would you do? I, I will continue to do it. But for me and my spirit, I put my spirit into my speeches. So whenever I do my speeches, I kind of act it out. So he may say, if you want something bad enough, you go out and fight for it. You work day and night. For it. But when I do it, I'm like, you want something bad enough, you go out and fight for it. You work day and night for it. You give all your time, your peace. I will put my spirit into that. So that will make mine different than his. Thank you. I have one, one time for one time to share and hand up first. I'm sorry. Ruth Prince, a uh, question for Barry. You said you have to know the competition's voice, but then what do you do with it? All right. You have, you How do you use it to help you? Because it's a sound. It's, it's, it's a, just like you like this. There's certain artists that you know that when you listen to, I don't know, Aretha Franklin. When you hear Aretha Franklin, no matter how many other people have sung this song, you know her sound. That's her sound. To, to answer his question, that can never happen in my plan. There's no way that I'm competing against somebody that I don't know what they're talking about beforehand. That's an impossibility. But when you hear, like the way you speak right now, there's a certain there's a certain strength to the way you speak. Now I have to figure out what your content is going to be. I figured that out just hearing you speak twice. All of a sudden, so once I heard your sound, I said, okay, what's our content? And can you tell a story? And if those three things are not together, I got you. So how are you going to compete with Aretha Franklin? <laughs> <laughs> How does teams win? How did LeBron James just win? You have to practice. I'm a Yankees fan. How do the Yankees win all the time? We practice. How did Michael Jordan win all the time? He practiced. He never took anyone lightly. So when I competed in this contest, I practiced my speech at least five to six hundred times. Every single, well, at least three hundred times a week. I'm competing against the world in August. Yeah. Every, I'm up to at least 150 already. It's 4 to 12. I got to do some more practice. <laughs>